One Bag Travel is literally exploding right now. I mean, there's a subreddit for One Bag Travel with over 500,000 members. It's blowing up on Google Trends. YouTubers are talking about it. This has to be more than just a small niche. I need more answers. Hey, what's up, Tab? So check it out. I'm making a video about One Bag Travel. You ever tried it? Dude, honestly, it kind of sucked. The bag was heavy. I couldn't find anything. It made my back hurt. It's just overall a pain in the ass, man. So is that it? Does one bag travel suck? I wonder what the Nomads Nation community thinks about this. One bag travel, is it good or is it bad? It's fantastic. I've been doing it for 32 years. It's the best. And why? And why? So it's, it's freedom. That's what it is. Stuff weighs you down and one bag keeps the boundaries very tight with a few zips. Because waiting at the line with the airport for your bag and just getting this. I never really understood why people needed these like gigantic, massive suitcases. People are going crazy about one bag travel. But how can you fit everything you need for your trip in one backpack? And where did Tav f up and how do you avoid the same pitfalls? Okay, that's super interesting. What bag did you travel yeah, with? Yeah, I went with a no-name trekking backpack. Really? Can you describe it? Sure, yeah. It was a uh, 55 liters, top loader, metal frame, tons of pockets. Yeah, it was like... So if there's one thing that I recommend splurging on for one bag travel, it's a great pack. If I'm going hardcore one bag travel, AKA I'm traveling for a shorter period of time and my goal is to never, ever, ever, ever have to pay for my bag nor to be separated from my bag, First option, the Minol Daily Bag 3.0. It's 21 liters, it's as small as I'll go, and really it's just perfect for a few days visiting a new city. Super minimalist on the inside, just a bit of organization of the main compartment, and I absolutely love the laptop compartment. It's one of the most secure that I've ever tested. Next up is the Air Pro Pack 24 liter. It's great for weekend trips, especially if you have a decent amount of tech gear. I love the durability of this 840D ballistic nylon and the quick access of this admin pocket, which is ideal for big bulky headphones. This is the bag that I brought on a three day trip when I was one bag into Vietnam where I'm building my own backpack. Next up is the Able Carry Max 30 liter. It's great for five to 10 plus day trips. It's a super comfortable wear and it can pack a lot more than it looks. And I absolutely love this creamy colored interior. Those three bags are super lightweight and smaller, which means they'll always fit under the seat in front of you. So you'll never have to end up like Dawn here. I have never successfully flown from Boston to Calgary without them losing my luggage. I think I've flown there maybe seven times. No way. Never, never have I ever received my luggage. So I, I hate airlines for that so much. But what if you need more stuff? Back in my full-time digital nomading days, I was literally living out of a backpack for months on end while I was traveling the world. These bags are definitely on the heavier side, but they're super comfy and they're just gonna let you pack more stuff for a long-term travel lifestyle. I got another bag from Manal, the Manal Carry-On 3.0, which for me is an ideal bag when you have a mix of sort of urban and outdoor adventure travel. And I gotta say, I love how you can stow away the shoulder straps which basically turns this bag into a duffel. And 35 liters gives you a lot more room to carry your stuff, which is why I used this bag when I was motorbiking through Vietnam four years ago. But what if you need more room? Number five on the list, the Tortuga Travel Backpack. 40 liters. It's basically a monster suitcase that you get to wear on your back, made with insanely durable materials. But most importantly, it's easily the comfiest large travel backpack that I've ever reviewed. But the trade-off for a big heavy bag like this is that sometimes you might have to pay a fee or check it altogether. This will depend on the airline and the mood of the person working the front desk that particular day. Oh, and fun fact, if you fly Frontier, you're fucked. Their agents actually get a commission for every bag they charge for. Thanks, Frontier. It should be noted that all those bags are really premium, which means they're really expensive. And if you wanna try the one bag travel lifestyle, you don't need to dish out 350 USD on a pack. Get something cheap, make sure it has full clamshell style opening. And if you wanna splurge at a later point in time, you will have earned it. To get a behind the scenes look at the process of me building my own backpack from the ground up, and if you wanna vote on some of the key features, you can do so with the first link in the description. Now that you got your bag sorted out, you'll need to be strategic about what you're packing. Like what's your packing philosophy for like a one week trip versus a one month trip? Normally I'm just take as little as possible, but often 
if I'm going for one week, I'm like, oh, I can bring heaps of stuff. Whereas when I'm going for long term, it's almost the inverse. I'm like, I want to be carrying this nonstop a lot, like lots of countries. That's when I'm really thinking about, you know, these pants, are they going to be good in every photo? Because I'm only bringing one pair of pants. Which is hard for most people because everyone wants to feel prepared. It's our human nature to hoard. Hoard. Hard D at the end of that. All right, so what did you pack in your bag? So obviously I put in clothes, but I think my mistake was that I brought like a tent and sleeping bags and some camping stove and sleeping mats. But did you end up even using the tent or the camping uh, stuff? Honestly, man, I, I spent most of my time in hostels. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make a massive distinction between the things you need to pack and the things you want or even think you need to pack. And what you need to bring depends on the destination, not the duration of your journey. I'll explain why in just a minute. Personally, I have a packing list on Trello that I'm constantly updating, but here's my strategy broken down into different categories. Category one, what I'm wearing. What you wear on your flight can actually be quite strategic. For instance, jeans and a jacket can be quite heavy. So when you wear them, it helps to cut down on your weight, which is especially important when traveling on budget airlines. I got socks, underwear, jeans, travel belts, shoes, jacket, shirt, undershirt, and my overhead headphones. One note about the travel belt is it is in fact a money belt. You can see I've got a hidden zipper where I can keep backup cash just in case. Category two, clothes. I'll usually pack around three to four pairs of everything. In the larger packing cube, I've got three pairs of shorts and four pairs of shirts. And in the smaller packing cube, I got three pairs of socks, three pairs of underwear, and three undershirts. I use packing cubes because it helps to compress everything and it sort of acts as like mini shelves once I get to my actual destination. Plus, everyone that I spoke to uses them as well. It's important to note, to one bag travel like a pro, you gotta keep your clothing to a minimum. Only take what you need, pick up more clothes on the road if you need to, and get really good at doing laundry, either at your Airbnb, by hand, or at a local laundromat. What about when it comes to laundry? Like, what's your, like, are you doing a lot of laundry on the road? Depends on the country. Uh, if I'm in Europe and, or America where stuff's expensive, it's, it's, it's bathroom sink kind of soap sudden laundry deal, hanging and drying. And then when I'm in Bali, yeah, it's like laundry once a week if you need it, once every couple of weeks, just as soon as you run out of undies, that's when they're, that's when they're off. And you might be thinking to yourself, but Aaron, what about cold climates? Which I get, I'm from Florida. I'm a bitch with cold weather. Let's hear what Zion's got to say. And like layering is really important in Alaska. As long as you layer well, you don't need heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And like me personally, I produce a lot of heat. So as long as I contain that heat, I'm fine. <laughs> so uh -huh. all I need is my gloves, light jacket, um, heavier jacket, rain jacket, and I can withstand like down to like 20 or 10 degrees, even like zero degrees. Like it's a, you don't need really big heavy for a year to stay warm. Okay, next up is category three, travel essentials. Basically, these are the non-clothing items that I bring. One keychain, one moleskin with pens, a protein bar, one dop kit from Wandered, pair of shades, one passport wallet that has both my passports, international driver's license, backup cards, backup cash. I've been using this one from side by side because it can turn into a sling, has good organization, and it fits in my back pocket. One EDC wallet for my primary cards and cash. This is the Bellroy flip case, which I love for its durability and the fact that you can just play with it all day. It's too much fun. And a few packs of nicotine gum to keep me off of the cigarettes. Category four, tech gear. You're gonna need an adapter. I've been using this one. It's from a brand called Go. I randomly picked it up at an airport in Germany and it's been doing great for me ever since I got it. One type of every charging cable. And one note on cables, although it might be tempting to get one of these like multi cables, they aren't super durable. So do proceed with caution if you're gonna get one of these. One external charging battery. I've been using this bad boy from Anchor for a few years now. It's been fantastic. And backup headphones. I'm a music junkie, so I always bring two pairs, AirPods and wired ones, just in case. And if I'm working a lot during my travels, I'll also bring some extra work gear, including a external mouse, keyboard, and a laptop stand. And the last category just sort of depends because I'll pack different things depending on what kind of trip it is. A romantic weekend with my wife, I'll probably bring the Polaroid camera. A super long haul international flight, I'm definitely bringing a travel pillow. So if you want to find out all these things that I possibly and definitely bring and all the brands that I use, you can find my full packing list in the description below. 
Here are five must know one bag travel tips. Tip number one, bring a sling. It's best to travel with a backpack slash sling combo. If your backpack is super big, then you can keep your bag in the overhead bin and have all your most important gear with you at all times while you're flying. The Air Tech Sling 2 is a great travel companion when you gotta get some work done. And the Air Go Sling 2 is a super lightweight option that packs down if you wanna put it in your bag. And if you're not really into slings, you can bring a packable day bag instead. Tip number two, make a to-do list before you leave. A part of my packing list is my to-do list, because if I know what to do, I'll know what to pack. I'll charge all of my tech so I don't have to bring extra batteries. And to make sure I can leave my clippers at home before I go, I shave my face and my... Tip number three is multi-use slash multi-purpose items for the win. Some one-baggers are really hardcore with like making sure that every item they have or as many items as they have have multiple purposes. Do you try mm -hmm. to do anything like that? Can yeah. you expand upon that? So all my clothes do double duty. Might only wear like white t-shirt a black t-shirt and let's say a striped t-shirt and where i can do double duty with things is my jewelry my glasses because i can change out glasses like that right so mm. my accessories is what i use to dress up dress down even my shoes i only try and travel really with one pair of shoes and that's usually on my feet so i always travel with my air force one shoes they're super durable, pretty water resistant, and they look good in a business meeting or at the gym. Merino wool clothing is super popular in the one bag travel community. Although it's a bit pricey and the materials are a bit itchy, it's super lightweight. And because it doesn't stink up really fast, a normal t-shirt can be worn for two or three days instead of the normal one. Talk to you about Merino wool. Love Merino wool. I think it is totally the bomb. It's worth the price, especially, you know, you don't have to wash all the time. I mean, I physically wash myself all the time, but not my clothes and again same thing you know one black t-shirt can carry me for seven days so I, I can take less to make more tip number four is ditch a lot of the dock stuff hotels and airbnbs are usually going to supply like soap conditioner and shampoo plus it's much less weight in your bag and there's just like less tsa bs to have to worry about plus have you ever had a bottle of shampoo like explode in your backpack Hard pass. And tip number five, you don't need to splurge. I'm not gonna lie, there's a ton of killer, lightweight, multifunctional one bag travel gear out there. If you're on a budget, just use what you have and you can upgrade later down the line. One bag travel is a lifestyle choice that needs to be experienced to truly understand. And once you do, you'll probably quickly understand why it's grown so fast in popularity. Now, if the idea and the challenge of packing less appeals to you, whip out that notebook and start building your own packing list. And if you need some inspiration, I've included my packing list in the description below. And if you wanna get a behind the scenes look at the community developed backpack that we're building here on Nomads Nation, and you wanna vote in some of the key features, be sure to check the first link in the description. My name's Aaron, this is Nomads Nation, and we'll catch you next time.